All right, what's going on, Retro Duelists? So, in this video, we're going to be going ahead and covering Deck Devastators 5. It happened this past weekend, September 4th, all right? Or it was September 3rd and 4th. There was a two-day event. There was a top 16 cutoff. And we're going to be going ahead and going over, I believe, the top eight decks. Uh, if you guys want to watch some of the other deck lists from the top 16, the top 16 cut, uh, I do definitely recommend that you guys go ahead and check out Pro's channel on YouTube. I'll put uh, some information down there in the description. So that way you guys can check out her channel and see all the coverage from the event. But before we go ahead and jump into the video, I do want to remind people that there are two in-person large Edison events that are happening this month. One of which I will be taking part in, which is the Collectible Exchange one on the 16th of this month. I will be one of the bounties. So if you win versus me, you get some free packs. And the tournament is going to be for a Nintendo Switch. There will be additional prizing uh, depending on how many people will show up. Uh, we are expected to at least get 40 players. And I believe we have a 64 player cap. So if you guys are interested in that... Uh, I do recommend you guys come on out. It is in Southern California. I will have some more information down below for that. And then if you live on the East Coast, they have a 1K tournament for Edison happening. All right. Uh, I'm pretty certain. And if anyone here watches E3's YouTube channel, you all know that he is going to this event and he will be playing in the event. So if you live on the East Coast, I definitely do recommend that you guys go ahead and check out this event the 1k edison tournament uh, both information is on the screen i'll put a little bit more down in the comments below from when i can and uh yeah let's go ahead and jump into the top eight deck lists so first deck that we saw on the list is a Willadad deck that is also running the bubble man uh, Bubble Man has been, uh, you know, a kind of spicy tech uh, to go ahead and just get a level four out and go for a, a nice, good synchro play for six. Maybe even make it into an eight if you have uh, Power Well or any other cards uh, set face down. Uh, the list is pretty standard for the most part from what I've seen. Uh, I think the two notable things that or that I've seen in here, of course, is the Bubble Man as well as the Necro Gardener. Uh, I think, uh, I do run this deck. Uh, I run the one that Keegan, uh, E3, uh, did a deck profile on. Uh, I've just been running that one here and there. I kind of like it. It's not really my style of play, but I do think the deck is very good. Uh, I actually might try this one out and see how it goes. I don't know if I'll run the bubble man or not, but the idea of it, I really like this card just feels absolutely busted when it actually goes off. And outside of that, like most of the deck list is pretty standard. And then when we come down into the side, uh, Prohibition, in all honesty, I think is one of the most slept on uh, side deck cards in the format. If you're a really good player and you have, you know, you have really good reads on what your opponent's going to be playing, what they're going to be siding in, or you just really know how to beat certain decks, you can just go ahead and activate Prohibition and then more often than not if you got the read right you're gonna win uh they do have the two bottomlesses in the side they also have two compulses i uh, feel like compulse is just a staple at this point it's really good it's really annoying and it's just the fact that it just trades with absolute is just ridiculous all right we're just gonna leave it at that <laughs> um mask of restrict in my opinion is actually not that great of a card i mean it it can buy you a turn or two, but that's about it. It's not something you can really rely on, which I think is also why it's only a one in here. But I think I'd probably run something else other than Master Restrict in place of it. Maybe even I'd probably run an additional Prohibition if, if it was me. If I was just going with this deck, I think that's probably the one card that I'd probably trade out. But outside of that, the deck is pretty standard for the most part. 
It's a neat deck. I definitely recommend people try it out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the one Kaius, though, is kind of like, eh. I still run three in mine, and it sometimes feels bricky, but, you know, maybe I might cut it down and try it out again at one. But, yeah, we'll just have to see. All right, now, going into the next deck list, it is, if I'm correct, this is Ronarx, or Ronarx. I don't know how to pronounce his name. All right, he did it on podcast. I still mess it up. It is what it is. Uh, this is his Mausoleum Frogs. Uh, I still think this deck is actually kind of dope. I still cannot get my head around how to play this deck more often than not. Uh, I have built it. Uh, I do want to take it to locals to try it out. Uh, I also, in the event, learning that Light and Darkness does not negate Gear Town is actually kind of wild. And now that I know that, it is actually insane. And I really, really, really want to play it even more now. Uh, I've never even seen this card. All right. Shiba Warrior. Let's see, what does this card do? When this card is... Uh, this card is my battle. When this card is on the front, my battle. I'm trading this face-up card. Too. Wait, what? Wait, so like... What? Is it... What? Wait, but like... Okay, maybe someone down in the comments below can go ahead and fill me in on like what this card actually does. And like, what's the purpose of it in this deck? Um, yeah, I, I just do not know that it. What? Just reading like. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll just yeah. We'll leave it at that. Um, I do love the ancient gear beast. Uh, I probably would run two of this on the side. Uh, ancient Gear Beast is actually a really, really ridiculous card. I love it. I'm an Ancient Gears player. I, I've loved, I've loved the archetype for as long as I can remember, and it's one of my favorite ar archetypes like in the game. And Ancient Gear Beast does not get as much love as I feel like it should. Uh, Crystal's pretty standard. Triple Crow pretty standard. This is actually kind of cool, just to go ahead and get a 28 beater that also skips their next draw phase. Um, or they, wait, oh no, they, oh shoot, actually, they discard all cards in their hand during the next draw phase. That's wild. So that, oh, actually I might, I need to pick up a copy of this. I need to see what, what rarity it comes in. Hopefully it comes in like Ultra or Seeker or something like that. Uh, the one Unifrog is cool. Vanity's Fiend, you know, pretty standard. The Necro Valley is actually kind of wild. Seeing as it doesn't conflict with, uh, well, it does conflict with Treeborn, but you know, it is what it is. And yeah, this is deck. Honestly, I want to try out. I, I really like it. Uh, after seeing it in this event, uh, I'm definitely going to make some alterations to the build that I'm currently running. And I might make a video or two in the future with this deck. Uh, that is also the same thing we said with the wallet ad deck. I do need to do some recordings with it and we'll get some videos up with it on the channel. And then we're going to go ahead and move into this beautiful monstrosity all right it's the virus deck i think crow even brought brought it up like this deck is like all right i am gonna constantly get monsters on the board that have enough attack to go ahead and just trigger off all these traps i'm gonna play and you're just gonna not <laughs> like that's really what this is uh, I don't think um epidemic or eradicator is that great in edison it's kind of wishy-washy here and there but just deck dev is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> and yeah, no, this, this is just, yes. I, I think this one I'm, I might build as well just to piss off some people at locals. Uh, I have picked up a lot of these cards mainly because I'm making an FTK deck. Uh, I will do a profile of it on the video on the channel soon. Uh, once I'm done cooking, because I have been cooking like a madman trying to get that deck to work and actually get it turned into an actual uh, FTK. Um, and it is running the dragon engine in it. So yeah, 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 that's coming soon. But this deck actually looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I didn't really get to see it played and 
any of the event, so I don't really know how well it was doing. I mean, it did get top eight, so it did really, really, really well. So it is something that's on my radar to go ahead and try as like a fun deck to play that's outside of like my normal like two or three decks. As I was talking about earlier, here we go with a three prohibition. All right. This deck is, or this card is amazing if you know what you're doing. So I'm assuming this person 100% knew what they were doing. They knew the weak points of their deck. So I'm just going to go ahead and activate prohibition and then you're just not going to be able to interact. Uh, but outside of that, I think Doom Cow is kind of like an iffy guard, but it's really good in certain situations, especially versus certain decks. Uh, our quick draws one. Um, Light Sworn's another one. Uh, swinging into like a hamster face down and then destroying it and then it not getting the effect is actually really, really clutch. Grand Mole's just a bust card. Uh, dark, dark Drives, dope. Skill Drain, amazing. It's limited to two for a reason. It's just too good. So go ahead and just shut down plays, especially once all your monsters are easily over 2k or 2500. Uh, now, now this is where we start to get into the rise of the Black Wings. The Vayu Turbo decks have risen again. They are flying as a flock and they are back. Uh, there was a lot of them in this event from what it looked like and... I've been wondering where this deck has kind of gone. It feels like, especially at least at my locals and at a few other places, this deck is not really played too often. I think in most likely what happened is that people got tired of the deck and then they were like, I'm going to go venture out and play some other stuff. And then they went out and ventured and they're like, all right, I'm done messing around. I'm coming back with vengeance and I'm going to show everyone why this deck was as good as it was and why it still is. Because this deck, I believe there's two or three more in the next four deck lists. And yeah, this is, I think this is actually pretty standard. I don't think there's really anything in here that stands out to me that's any different from any other list. I think maybe the main deck Cyber Dragon is actually maybe the one thing. But outside of that, this deck looks pretty standard from what I've seen in the past so we'll go ahead and walk it on over to the next deck okay i think this is the one the one variant dragon turbo all right i i still cannot like wrap my head around this deck all right you can go ahead and roast me in the comments down below but i really just don't know like i this the deck kind of just I just don't, I, I don't understand how it does so well. I mean, I get it. You're able to get a bunch of monsters on board very, very quickly, but like that doesn't happen too often. And the deck bricks terribly. And I mean, terribly does it brick. So I don't know. I think I really do just need to play this game or play this, this deck and see how it is because anytime I've seen people play it, I think outside of the RBET, Marina Valley, uh, it just doesn't do well. Uh, maybe you might be able to win round one, but then going into rounds two, three, and four, uh, it's just, it just doesn't hold up to quite a few of the other decks. But let's see. Is there anything really even noticeable in this? Uh, I mean, the Vortex Trooper, I feel like that's in the main in most of these now. Uh, yeah, no, that's actually quite about it. All right, now here we go back into some more Black Wings. Uh, this one I don't really see as the Vayu Turbo variant, but it is another Black Wing deck that is actually running two Vayus, even though they're not running any Griffers, no nothing. So I guess it's just a search target or a card to set face down to go ahead and use Icarus attack. Um, them using Legacy of Yada. Uh, I did get into a discussion with one of my friends, Sean about how he would he would rather have just better traps or better spells in the deck uh, to actually use rather than have Yada as just something out there for bait. Uh, I kind of understood the point, but I do think that having an ability to just go ahead and go uh, one for one with the spell and trap, uh, maybe like MST or maybe you set down to Yadas or, you know, Reckless Greeds or whatever it is uh, and go ahead and just baiting out the heavies and baiting out the MSTs, baiting out whatever destruction your opponent has. 
Uh, it's kind of nice. But he plays the game a different way than I do. So, you know, we'll go ahead and uh, agree to disagree. But outside of that, this deck is pretty... It's standard again. This is just usual Black Wings. Just regular stand, like standard Black Wings outside of the 2 value. Which probably... Uh, maybe you can put in like... What? A Armageddon Knight? Something else? Who knows? But outside of that, no, you got two Cybers, you got two Crows, you got two Fossils. Noblemans, because set meta is still a thing and will always be a thing. Uh, I am surprised to not see three deck dev viruses. I feel like that's something that should be in every Blackwing deck is three. Just because the card auto wins you the game versus quite a few decks. Uh, the Double Dusts, eh, maybe. And honestly, probably you could take out the Yadas, put, the dust in, put a Dust in here. Put it, or actually, one deck dev, one dust tornado. Those will be the two slots right there. And then you can just go ahead and have extra removal and uh, viruses going into games two and three. Uh, two pulling the rugs, pretty nice. Most of the list, I think, run two. I think I've seen three in a few, but for the most part, two's fine. And then there's you go with your second impression. Yep. Pretty standard. Here we go into the other, like I said. <laughs> The other Vayu Turbo deck. Uh, this one is actually running two hamsters and three Rikos. They are still also running the two Greffers, two Armageddon Knight package. And I don't really see anything different outside of the mind control on the side. Uh, they are opting to run three Dust Tornado and two deck devs and three pulling the rugs and a Starlight Road. But outside of that, it's really it. There's not much variance in these decks. And then going into the last one. Again, Black Wings. So Black Wings top, or what is it? Top three? Because we got Black Wings, Black Wings, Black Wings, and then Dragon Turbo. So Black Wings, as I said earlier, was uh, very prevalent in this deck. Uh, it's starting to make the comeback, uh, being one of the decks to beat. And it's also showing why it is one of the decks to beat by going ahead and having not just one, but not just two, but three decks in the top four uh, and four decks in the top eight. It's it's just a deck. All right, guys. The, de the, the deck is super cheap. Anyone can go ahead and build it for probably under $80. So you can probably get the whole core, the whole everything. You probably get the whole core for 15 bucks because they had that recent reprint. Um, but outside of that, you can go ahead and build the deck for cheap and go ahead and start pump stopping your locals and go ahead and getting all them sweet, juicy OTS packs and pulling all those sweet, juicy ultis. Uh, the one crow in the side, I think is the one thing that's notable in here that I think most decks, most tend to run two. I think the only deck that really gets away with running one is quick draw. But that's because we are able to replenish it with uh, drill warrior. So them only running one crow mm, could make them very susceptible to certain decks, mainly being uh, Dragon Turbo and sometimes Frogs because they don't really have any way to go ahead and get rid of the Treeborns. Uh, but outside of that, that's about it. I have known a couple people to run my bodies to go ahead and protect themselves from like Mirror Force and stuff and Black, or Black Rose. But outside of that, that's really it's uh if you guys haven't seen the coverage i do recommend i know i said it earlier in the video i'm gonna say it again uh it was actually a pretty entertaining event from what i was able to watch uh I, it is on crow's channel i'll go ahead and link that down below but if you guys like the video please don't forget to like comment and subscribe i thought the event really went really well outside of some technical difficulties that were very unfortunate but yeah that's my little breakdown of the event and the top eight deck lists. If you guys want the top 16, uh, I do recommend that you guys go ahead and check out Crow's video. And um, yeah, have a good one, everyone. And I will see you guys in the next one. Deuces.